Okay, if you haven't opened 3DS Max, go ahead and open it. And welcome to 3DS Max Coffee Cup Tutorial. First of all, we're going to set up a few things. Hopefully you haven't found it too confusing, but it definitely is confusing if, never you if you've never used it before. Up top here, the top left, I'm going to click on that, and we're going to go set up our save file. Go save as. I'm going to pick a place for it. I've got a place ready for it. So choose a file location that you're going to find easily, something that you'll know. Go ahead and do that. You might need to pause the video in between, between these steps that you're doing. And then come back to it. So at the moment, I'm going to set my save files up. I'm just going to call it Coffee Cup and press Enter. Okay, so you notice at the top it says Coffee Cup now. Now, also one thing that um, you need to set up is your quick save because 3ds Max is not set up from default. So, if you go to Customize, go to the bottom of that, go Preferences, click on it. Now you've got all of this stuff. Um, let's go to files. So it's on general here. Go across to files. And here we go. This little box here that says increment on save. I did check it already, so that's why it was checked. But you just want to make sure that box has got a little tick in it. Okay. And then click OK down the bottom. So, what that means is every time you do a quick save, it increments the file. So, you're not overwriting the previous file you had, so you can always go back to a previous file. So, if you press Ctrl and S on the keyboard, like I've just done, and now it says Coffee Cup 01. So, it's saved another file different to the first file and so forth. I'll do it one more time so you can see, look up the top and I'll push control, hold it down and then just push S, goes to 2. So that's just something you can do easily, you save very often and if anything happens hopefully you've got enough save points. Or if you make a mistake then you will and you can't go backwards, you can just go back through your save files. So what we've just done is use the top menu bar. So that's included in the menu bar, the top there. And all this stuff just has our drop down menus. Everything is in there. We don't need to use them all the time because there's a lot of quick links everywhere around the screen as well. So, at the moment, we're going to work in our viewport. There's four screens here. So this is our perspective viewport. This is our front viewport. This is our top viewport, so top view and the left. Okay. Now, at the moment, we're going to work just in our front viewport over here. So click on that viewport with your left mouse button. And push Alt W on your keyboard to maximize that viewport. So now it takes up the whole screen. Now, 
over here um, over here in our command panel this whole side part um, you've got all these tabs up the top but at the moment you want the far left tab it says create if your mouse hover hovers over it so you're probably already on that one and it should be on ge oh, geometry already but you want the one next to it and then go down to line now click on line because that's what we're going to use now the viewport where my mouse is right now that's the center so everything above that or this center point this horizontal line is pretty much say the floor okay and everything on this line is the center of everything this vertical line so this is a good reference to keep everything on as the center so we're going to create half of a coffee cup actually what I might do first is customize go up to the top to customize it's one thing I forgot to do you don't have to do this but we will do this as good habit to form get a unit set up I'm going to click metric um, and because we're creating a coffee cup it's not very big we're not going to use meters we'll use centimeters I think that'll be good and click OK so what that means is each of these little grids become a metric measurement of centimeters so one grid is one centimeter so let's go over to line so we're still on line click about the center with your mouth left mouse button click on it and pull it over we want to make a straight line so that's not a straight line but if I hold down shift and then move it it is a straight line okay so when you so hold down shift go to there keep holding shift then left click your mouse button and drag it up try and keep it on the grid edges you go across click again go down click again go across okay now you let go of the shift button and you're still creating a line but you want to end the line so right click on your mouse now you've finished but over here in the command panel line is still highlighted that means we can still make lines but we don't want to so right click and then right click until it goes away so it's not highlighted anymore okay so that's that's our shape of half our coffee cup now let's make it a bit more like a coffee cup so I go to the command panel at the top go to modify double click on this box that says line 01 call it whatever you like I'm going to call it cup keep it simple so what we've done there is this shape has a name now called cup because we will turn it into a cup 
don't worry about this colour pink we'll sort that out at the moment we're going to go down to you click on this little plus button it brings up some options vertex segment or spline so click on vertex we can adjust these vertices okay now I'm going to use the mouse a bit here so on the center the scroll wheel push it down and drag it so this is about in the middle hold your mouse over it and then scroll your mouse wheel so it's so it, so it zooms in a bit alright now click on one of the vertices and we want to we want to move this vertice into the middle into exactly the middle okay so there's two ways of doing it we can select the move tool up here or we can push W on our keypad it's just much easier to, to just push W on the keypad now you'll notice down the bottom it says X and it's got a measurement we want that to be zeros that's this line here so it's got these two arrows up and down if I right click on this bottom arrow it makes it zeros it centers that one it's actually moved this vertex dead onto this line do the same with this one. Right left click on the vertex. Right click on this arrow and that's in the center. Okay. Now this line's not on this line. It doesn't have to be. But if you left click and drag, this box comes up. Cover those two vertices. Okay. Now what we can do is drag this down. Make it on that line. Okay. You'll notice that that Y. doesn't mean anything <laughs> what if we click on this one there we go Z there we go Z so that's dead on that bottom line now sometimes you just experiment and if you make a mistake which I'll do right now for you Let's say I accidentally grabbed this one and moved it. And I want to fix that mistake. You've got an option called Control Z, which is undo, common function. And it puts it right back into where it was. Um, as a default setting, I think you've got about 10. You can go up to 10 times as an undo. So if I make that mistake, don't do that mistake, <coughs> you've got up to 10 mistakes, but you can change that in the um, customize preferences, customize that, but that's also what you save more often, then you can just go back to a game save, sorry not a game save, file save, alright. Have a bit of a play with the mouse, move it around, zoom in and out, get used to that. Now, what we want to do is to make some curved edges because coffee cups aren't square. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the fillet tool, and I can see it just here. So scroll down under geometry. Oh, 
What have I done? I've just lost it. There it is there. Geometry. Sorry. Click on that. Let's scroll down a fair bit. Go to fill it. Click on it. Now, click on the verse you want to adjust and hold it and just drag it up. And if you keep holding it and drag it back down, you can still adjust it to where you want. So I'm going to put it on those edges. Okay. So what it's done is it's split those two edges, made a curve. You can see what's happening. So click on your vertice, but you do have to hold your left mouse button to click it and drag it up. I think about there looks just fine. Okay. Now, if you let go of your left mouse button and it's still not where you want, you'll have to control Z to undo it. Like that. Because if you click it, and it's, oh, I don't want it there, you can't readjust it because it makes a whole new fillet. So, control Z, do the whole thing again. That'll happen a lot. Drag it down a bit, zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. So it's using your mouse wheel. Again, hold your mouse wheel down and drag your mouse around and then scroll your mouse wheel in and out now we want to fill it this one drag it up and the same as this side drag it up just don't let them touch okay that's most of our cup done. So our fillet tool is still highlighted. You can um, click on it there with your left mouse button or while your mouse is in the viewport you can right click on your mouse and that um, removes the fillet tool. If you right click on the viewport and there's nothing selected you get some menus. So just go away from those menus and left click in the viewport anywhere else and that will get rid of those okay now the next step is several ways of doing this actually no we we'll go to the modifier list at the top first modifier list and scroll down till you see lathe okay there is it. Click on it. That's one way to get the lathe modifier. That's the easiest way to get the lathe modifier. But down the track, if you um, you want to set up this, you can set some um, modifiers to be always there ones that you might use commonly. Lathe probably won't be one of them. But um, you can do this option. And down here there's some other tools as well. I'm going to click on the bin. That gets rid of my lathe modifier. So another way to pick it, the modifiers is to click on it. Press L. I must have muddled that up, put off push tail and it goes to lathe. It won't always go to the one you want, but it just makes it come up a bit quicker to where you want to be. So if you just push the start of the letter. Then click on it. Oh, no. Click on it. I'm not very good at this. Lathe. Click. Done. Right. It's awkward to make mistakes, I think. Now, down yeah, under parameters, 
You want to check world core, so tick that box. And flip normals, tick that box. Underneath segments, we're going to go to 18. And direction. Now, push all of these buttons and have a look at it and see what happens. So I'm going to push X. Mm, that doesn't look like a coffee cup. Press Y. Yeah, that doesn't look like a coffee cup. And Z. Yeah, doesn't look like a coffee cup. So, to make this work, I push minimum. So you got all these align buttons too. So push all of those. So push minimum. Press X for minimum. Press Y. And press min. Press Z. Press min. The Y one looked most like a coffee cup, didn't it? Sort of. It's still in wireframe mode. And you can also play around. Check out what center does. Check out what max does. But we'll leave it on min. Okay, now we're going to convert this to an editable poly. You can right click on your mesh in the viewport. Convert to. Go over. Editable poly. Okay. So now, what we can do to this cup is we've given it life, so to speak. It's no longer a line, it's uh, an actual object. So up in the top left hand, we've got, it says wireframe. What we want to do is have a look at it as a solid object. So click on wireframe. And then you get a great big box of stuff. Um, so this is one way to access a menu. You can do all these things to the object. Um, airline, fabric, but anyway, we don't want that. Go back to wireframe. I like to use hotkeys on the keyboard, it's easier and quicker. So what we're going to do is push F4, F3, sorry, we're going to get F3, and that's going to change it to shaded mode. Actually, it'll probably change it to realistic. So push F3, and it's changed it to realistic, so it's given it life, so to speak. You can see it as a solid object. but when you're working on big models you don't want realistic mode because it takes up a bit of memory because it renders the um, image in the viewport so right click on realistic change it to shaded just makes it a bit less realistic <coughs> you can also press F4 on the keypad and it brings up your wireframe so you can see your wireframe in the model as well and you go yeah I don't want pink so up where you call it your cup cup click on the color pick a color um, your purple yeah that's more purple it's definitely not pink now Okay, so what we want to do now is let's have a look at the model, I suppose. So you can sometimes when you scroll, say I want to scroll in the viewport and it doesn't scroll, you might need to just click in the viewport or click on your model because you've been using the side menu. But another good trick is to hold the ALT key down and then push and hold the mouse wheel down and then drag that around. You can see the model 
in any direction you like. How cool is that? Now, to get it back to where you were before, push F on the keypad so that puts it back to the front viewport, the front view. Okay. Sorry about that, my driver's just played up. Oh. And 3ds Max has gotten upset. I'll see if I can recover this quickly. I apologise for that one. My display driver had gotten upset and 3ds Max didn't like it either. I've had to create a whole new cup because I hadn't saved. So up here where it says Coffee Cup 2, I'm going to push Control S. And it's not going to save it because I hadn't saved after I made those changes in the menu. So hopefully you're going to push Control S on your keyboard. Increment on save, yes. Why didn't it save for me? Ah. Control S. Thank you. Did that time. Very well, could have pushed the wrong button too. Okay, so a coffee cup. Hopefully you're up to there. Um, I was just, I'm literally just still creating the lathe modifier, which I know you actually should be passed. So, and then convert to editable point. Done. So what that means is our lathe modifier has gone away, it's all turned into one object and one editable poly. This part over here called the stack, it shows you everything on your modifier list. So what we want to do now is go to edge mode, so put your mouse over this triangle, click on that, bring your mouse to the side of your cup. Um, and hold down your left mouse button and drag a box across the center. As you can see that selects all of these lines. Okay. The other way of doing this is if you select one line over to here, command panel, push ring, selects all those lines in a ring way of doing it. Okay. Now what we want to do is on the command panel go down to the word that says connect and click on the settings box to the side of connect. I'm just going to drag that to the side. Now the first option up the top here is we've got the amount of segments or the amount of lines. So you can hold your left mouse button and drag it up. It just fills it up with lines. We'll drag it back down. Or you can click on it one at a time. Or you can just enter a value in there. Five. Yeah, I don't like five. Let's try four. All I'm trying to achieve is getting these, getting squares. I want squares on the side. More squares. Okay, the box underneath it you won't need, but you can play with it if you want. Drag it up, spreads the lines apart, drag it back down, brings them closer together. Alright, and if you want to adjust the height, 
you want them up higher, you want them down lower, or you can adjust the value, put a value in there yourself. We want zero. So push zero and enter. Or you can right click on the bottom arrow. That makes it zero as well. So this tick is the OK button. Left click on that. Alright, now yeah, that's done. Next, what we're going to do, scroll up to this box, go to polygon mode. What I'm going to do is click on this polygon, then I'm going to hold the control key down and click on this one. Now I've got two polygons selected. Now what I also like to do is push F2 if I do or don't want to see these coloured in. Okay, there'll be times where you want them coloured in, there are times when you don't. At the moment I will actually have them coloured in. So go back to your right side of the command panel, go down to the word that says inset, click on the small settings box there, what we're going to do is drag that up the smallest amount in the world. So I might actually into a value of 2 here. This box here is going to be our handle, the size of our handle. More, more, more to say, it's the size of the handle. I might actually go to 1. That looks a bit small. And then click OK. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to create the handle. Okay, so click on the top box. We only want one of those boxes selected, so just click on that, and that will keep that one selected and deselect that on its own. Alternatively, if you had both of them selected and you only wanted to deselect one box because you had several boxes selected, you could hold the ALT key down and then click on the box you don't want. So the ALT key also does that. OK, on the command panel you won't need to scroll down very far because we've got hinge from edge. OK, so click on the small box on the settings hinge from edge. So what we want is to choose an amount. I type in 160 and you'll see why in a minute. And segments. We're going to go for 7. Seven. It's going to work. Yep. Seven and enter. Now, click on this bottom next box down. Um, hinge from edge. Now we've got to pick the hinge. So when you click on it, go to your model, and you put the cursor on the edge between the two boxes. And that hasn't worked at all. I'm going to push Control Z. Hinge from edge. P. 
freaking hinge <laughs> interesting it's created a handle on the inside of our cup well that's embarrassing isn't it how are we going to resolve this I don't know why that's done that. But anyway, let's type in a value of negative 160 and push enter. Look at that. We've got a handle on the outside of our cup now. Isn't that fantastic? So I'm just using my mouse to scroll around and I'll OK. Now, this grid be quite annoying sometimes. Sometimes it's handy, sometimes it's not handy. If you want to get rid of your grid, which I do, push G on the keypad. Very good. Okay, now you can play with these values. Let's move your cup around so you can see the handle a bit better. On the angle, which we've adjusted, you'll see that that's adjusting the angle. 180 degrees is obviously half way around, but we want it at 160, so that's what we'll have. 160. And seven segments looks fairly even. Yeah, we'll keep it at seven. And we'll keep that because we want this gap. Okay. Now, try and move the cap around, hold Alt down, Alt key, and move it around so you can see. Zoom in, so you want to be able to see this face here, and this face here. Okay, so go to that face, go across the side and see the word that says bridge, find that, click on it, so now it's highlighted. Now, left click on this polygon and it's got a line. You're not having to hold your mouse button down to keep this line. Now you want to select the polygon that you want to bridge it to. It's that one. And if that's the result you get, that's perfect. You're done. And you right click and that gets rid of that. I'm also going to left click to get rid of the selection altogether. So left click anywhere else in the viewport that is not a model. So there you have it, there's the handle. One further thing I'd like to do is push F3 on the keypad. I go to wireframe mode because I'm going to go up the top, go to this triangle, select edge mode, left click in the viewport just to get deselect those edges you had before. Now up the top of the handle, I'm going to zoom in a bit, this can be a bit tricky to see, but zoom in in a spot, you want to pick this edge here. Now click on it, and it highlights it. Now you can hit loop over the side and that highlights that whole box. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Okay, so use your mouse to go down to the bottom one and we'll do it a different way. There's my loop there. Hold the, tr hold the control key down and double click on it and that will do the same thing. That'll select the whole loop. Look around, make sure the loop selected. And it is. Scroll out. Make sure you're on your move tool so you've got all these arrows sticking out. So what I'm going to do is move my model to the side. I'm going to so I'm going to grab this green arrow and push it out. Okay. That's going to make the edges smoother where the handle meets the cup. 
and it's also done the same because we had this one selected as well but down the bottom okay left left click in the viewport to deselect push F3 on the keyboard and zoom back out so you can see the cup okay you're ready for a new function I suppose just say we lost our cup where's our cup gone um, sometimes this will happen so what you want to do is push Z on the keypad brings it right back it's by far the easiest way to do it if you had multiple objects in your scene and you lost the one you wanted like I'm going to do deliberately lost it again over to the left hand side you'll see that my coffee cup is still called line because I didn't rename it so I'm just going to quickly name it cup <coughs> so I go over to the side push on cup oh, just push it at once already had it selected now push Z on the keypad and that will bring your item that you selected back into the viewport okay that's another very handy function now it still doesn't look great as a coffee cup so what we're going to do is put another modifier on top of it so go to your modifier list on the top left click on it and I'm going to scroll down a lot scroll 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 down to where it says turbo smooth okay click on it ah that's better now yeah, first I want to look at it because we're nearly done I just want to have a bit better look at it I'm going to push F4 on the keypad to get rid of the lines okay looks pretty good now in the command panel we'll go to iterations it says one click on it once more go to two let's smooth it out just a bit more don't go crazy with this or you'll crash blend you'll crash 3ds max because it puts a lot of topology a lot of polygons in your model so if you push F4 it's created a lot more as you can see there and if you want to see what this cup that you've made looks like you can render the picture you can make it a JPEG or whatever you want so you can go to on this left uh, right hand side you can render setup or what else can we do we can push F9 on the keypad we today definitely doesn't like me well I think maybe one of the reasons is I can't render is because the screen capture program uses the F keys, F9, F10. So you should very well be able to push F9 and the render window comes up. But I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. I go over here, up the top toolbar, this little teapot thing, got a render setup. It's appeared on a different screen for me, but here it is. Now you can push this render button here. And there's your coffee cup. Now what's happened here is I've made a mistake, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So close this window. 
close this window click on our cuppy cup go to polygon or you can select polygon here or you can select polygon here um, what we need to do is flip the normals now excuse me while I find out where it is again this doesn't happen too often or I think we might just go a normal modifier Oh, no, there we are, flip, I've scrolled down too far. So, what we want to do is drag a box around our whole object. Okay. Hit flip. And you should notice, if your cup looked normal, then that's okay. But um, I need to flip my normals. Okay, so they're flipped. Now, when I render my cup, put render, it will look a bit better. So, if you want to push on the turbo smooth at the top on the command panel again, okay, what we're going to do is right click on turbo smooth, go okay, collapse all. Click yes because we don't want to ever go back. You can't go back to the model how it was before, it's always got the turbo smooth on it now. That's how the model is. So, go to render again, push F9 on your keypad. You'll get this cup. Yay, I did a cup and it looks cool. So you can go over here, save image. Call it what you like. This is coffee. Cup. Done. Now just hit tab on a keypad, so tab. And we want to save it as a JPEG. So push J. And then hit enter. Okay. And then you can hit enter again or click on OK, whichever works. So let's save the picture of your coffee cup into the file that you've specified earlier. Speaking of which, close this window and close this window. Push Control S because you'll need to save your file. In the next video, we're going to show you how to texture the cup so not just make a color here which we can change at will so if you wanted a white cup you can have a white cup hey it looks cool it's a white cup you know we can actually make we can make it cooler okay thank you for watching this video I look forward to making the next video on making this coffee cup even cooler.